Hey, how's it going? I'm Isaiah. After my video about the seagulls and the Migratory Bird Act of 1918, my friend Captain Canuck, and yes, that is his real name, texted me and asked me, how much of that decision do you think was Woodrow Wilson, and how much of it do you think was Edith Wilson? Which was a great question, and I thought would be a great way to introduce a new kind of video that I want to do called Short Story Longer. Talking about Edith Wilson, who was President Wilson's second wife, she was by far the most powerful first lady we've ever had. I got the eye of the tiger, the See, Woodrow Wilson, as we already said, was a straight up baller. Uh, you know, he led the nation into the World War during his second term and won the World War, uh, which was interesting because he won his second presidency on the campaign slogan, he kept us out of war. Not too shortly after winning that campaign, he led us into the First World War, but it needed to happen. So when President Wilson was first elected president, he was married to another lady, her name was Ellen, uh, and she passed away. <sighs> and after she passed away, President Wilson remarried a lady named Edith. And it was quite a bit of a scandal in the White House. People were adamantly against him doing it. They thought that the nation hated it. They thought that he would lose re-election because of it. And so a lot of people fought against him remarrying, but he loved Edith so much. In fact, maybe more than he loved his first wife. Don't you like her? Well, of course I like her. She's a peach. So he went through with it. And once they were married, um, Edith got a little upset at the people that had tried to tell President Wilson to not marry her. So she, in her own sweet, soft, gentle way, Now shall you deal with me, O oh Prince, and all the powers of hell! <laughs> made sure that he cut all of those people out of his lives. Then whenever the nation entered into war, Edith started making some really, actually quite amazing decisions. Uh, she, for instance, to save money for the government, instead of hiring groundskeepers for the White House, she rented sheep. And had sheep mow the lawn by eating the grass. And then she would have the sheep shorn and sell the wool and all the profits would go to the government. And they made like $50,000 off of this venture. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, another way that, uh, that Edith changed things was she basically got rid of all of her socializing and all the, the parties and focused all her time on sewing, on making field jackets to send to the soldiers and, and uh, doing everything she could. She, she even hooverized the White House and set an example for all of the housewives of the nation of how they should ration meat and ration sugar and all this sort of stuff. Edith was, in a lot of ways, the first woman of America. She was the role model for everybody. Yes, I be a woman. So America went through it and through a lot of great efforts. It won the First World War. We are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers. Cause we are the champions. Of the world. Uh, after that, President Wilson took Edith and toured Europe together. Uh, very romantic if you really think about it. No, oh, it's so sweet. Uh, but as they toured, you know, she she was exposed to the French culture, the hotels, and a lot of different things, and, and really it broadened her horizons. Because before Edith was ever married to President Wilson, she had a first husband. He was a jeweler, and he was in the Washington area. Before that, she was the seventh child of eleven children, and never really expanded outside of the Virginia. Uh, countryside where she was born and raised. So being married to President Wilson and visiting Europe broadened her mind and opened her up to a lot of interesting ideas. And that's whenever they came back and President Wilson decided to tour the nation to gain support for the League of Nations project that he had come up with. And that to Edith was a bad idea because she was watching his health wane. She recommended he not do it, but he did it anyway. Well, as he was touring the nation, he collapsed. 
They brought him back to Washington and he had a stroke. This was in 1919, uh, October of 1919. He had a stroke and he was basically completely debilitated. This was a very bad thing. Uh, the doctors and President Wilson contemplated his resignation of office. Edith said absolutely not because she believed that the presidency was the only thing keeping Woodrow Wilson alive. So instead she said, I will be the steward for the president. Forever you let it, you ain't never got a word, I'm down for you let it. What did that mean? Well it meant that he was locked away and no one, not even his own cabinet, could come talk to him. Everything had to go through Edith. Everything that needed to be signed, every new law, everything went through Edith Wilson. And so, for basically the rest of President Wilson's presidency, Edith Wilson ran the country. She, now, she didn't make any decisions per se, but she did decide what things were worthy of having to bother the president. So therefore, if she decided to ignore something, it got ignored. So, by being the gatekeeper for the president, she shaped the entire nation. You might even say that Edith Wilson was the first woman president the United States ever had. And actually, for the most part, people loved her and valued her for it. Uh, she was featured in Eisenhower's administration, she was featured in FDR's administration, and she was at the inaugural parade for President Kennedy, and she died in 1961, fittingly on President Wilson's birthday. So I'm Isaiah, and that's making the short story long. Heh <laughs>